And we're back. How you doing, guys? Welcome to the uh, final two hours of today's uh, live shows on this channel. And then I get to go live for two shows on my other channel. Oh, there's no How stop on this guy guys? today. Welcome, welcome to one, welcome all to the uh, final hour of the market <clears throat> here on Stock Markets with Bruce. It's Uncle Bruce here uh, watching the final uh, 60 minutes with you, and then we'll see what happens in the uh, the aftermarket today. We uh, just launched a new emoji. I don't know if you've, don't know if you've seen it, but uh, I've put it up there. I uh, hope you like it. Um, we're adding emojis one at a time here. We just keep coming up with some more ideas and... Uh, pop some more up there if you have any ideas for emojis let me know what you think what kind of emojis you like us to produce we got a good bunch of members here which allows me to pop up a bunch of emojis for you guys to play with uh having fun um anyway uh thank you uh, for uh, for uh, being here thanks for joining this channel as a member appreciate that you guys uh it's really helping thank you for the thumbs ups also on this channel uh, those of you giving me thumbs ups when i'm live and also those who are giving me thumbs ups when i uh when i'm uh <laughs> I think some of you figured out the new emoji. Uh, when I uh, when and you're watching me on a rerun, I appreciate that you're giving me thumbs ups when you're watching me on a rerun as well, because uh, it's just as important as if it's live. Uh, believe me, uh, even uh, even reruns uh, with uh, with thumbs ups are really important to us. So thank you guys for this support. Yeah, we got the new emoji up there. It's there. Uh <laughs> Oh, man, I wish they were bigger. I wish they could be larger than they are, but there's only so much room that you can have on these things, and so you have to go with what they give you. But, uh, yeah, the Ni logo is up there, and uh, <laughs> we are the knights that say Ni. You can't get past us. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> stop shares right now. Uh, they're so boring. We have to have fun doing something. Uh, GameStop, 195.50 right now, down 477. Actually, um, that's an improvement in the last two hours, I guess, uh, because just after I went off the air uh, the first time this morning, we got down to that 180-something range. I think we reached a low of 186.20. Uh, still not low enough to get that 10% drop, so it didn't happen. Volume today, 8.3 million, very light. Now we're back to 195, which is kind of back to where we were, oh, about 11 o'clock, 11.45, 12 o'clock this morning. And that's where we were hanging around for the first <clears throat> almost two hours after the opening. Now we'll see if we can march an assault and, and come back up to the, you know, flat line or better. We'll see. Uh, the Dow up 165 points. Good news. There's money coming in this market. That's what we want to see. Uh, S&P up 40. NASDAQ up 233. So the, the overall markets are definitely trending higher now. They had a, you know, a wishy-washy mixed start. Uh, our friends at the NASDAQ were doing the best, but they were only up about a half a percentage point. Now we've got a half a point gain on the Dow, a 1% gain on S&P, and a 1.7% gain on NASDAQ, almost 1.8. Very good. We want that. Uh, we want the market uh, feeling um, better about itself and uh, the big cap stocks moving up. The, the higher the big cap stocks move, the more money that flushes around the rest of the market, and that sets up. Perhaps, perhaps, depending on tomorrow's uh, day at GameStop, we'll find out what they're going to do tomorrow with that announcement of their financials and then their uh, their uh, their uh, conference call. So we'll see. Uh, over at AMC, unfortunately, uh, still down a dollar thirty nine, but the stock has come back quite a ways from its low. They were as low as eleven seventy six today. So. They've come back um, 81 cents from the low to be down $1.36. So this stock was quite a bit worse than it was. The question is, will it continue to come on or will it uh, peter out? But look, uh, 75 million shares, uh, 12.56 on the stock, down $1.37. Sure beats 11 something. My gosh, I, I, I was looking terrible. <clears throat> and it was in the first hour and a half. It dropped that much. It just It just had no... There was no mercy on AMC at the beginning of the day. It was just pure down, down, tr down trending. But the thing that we're wondering about, I'm wondering about, is if you remember on Friday, AMC was having a problem at fourteen dollars a share. There was this, you know, like an invisible force field that was up there, and and the stock would be at thirteen ninety and go up to fourteen and couldn't get over it, back to thirteen ninety five and back up to fourteen and wouldn't go. And it, I mean, it just kept trading, and the, and the chart just kept looking like this, just. Eh, eh. Couldn't get over, and uh, all the shares traded wouldn't take out the fourteen dollar sell order. What for whatever reason for whomever is doing it, I don't know if that seller is still there or not. 
that seller is going to lower their price lower and to try to get out at the moment we don't know at the stock now is a buck 50 below that 14 dollar level on friday as you can see here down 144 right now to 1249 we'll follow it and see what uh what happens um you know just just that's all you can do um what else vector acquisition the aq one of the specs i've recommended has had a very good day today it's up a dollar 11 right now at 1271 had a high of 1317 i mean it was up you know 40 something cents from here uh it took a real shot from the in the first what is it hour and a half two and a half hours uh, right around 11 eastern it reached the high level there of thir in the low 13s but then it backed off and it's now been flatlining somewhere around this uh, 12 60 70 range somewhere 50 to 70 range somewhere in there it's been just kind of steady eddy right across the board 2.1 million traded Nothing incredible, but there's just very little selling of this stock at these low levels. I mean, it came out at 10 bucks, So, you know, the incentive for someone to want to sell uh, isn't all that great. Uh, but, you know, it does trade a little bit, and that's what it's doing. The um, the NAV site holdings, it had an up morning. started off nicely, but then it's given up some ground. It's down $0.06 cents to 10.30, which is telling me you've got a limited time offer to get in here because this stock is beginning to react when the vectors react, the vector stock, um, the vector acquisition makes a move, and then NavSite kind of goes with it, a little sympathy for a while, and then backs off. Keeping an eye, keep, remember that NavSite Holdings is the company that will be um, uh, interpreting data from satellites that will be launched by our friends at um, at uh, Vector. So uh, Vector Acquisitions is Rocket Lab. That's what they're going to be known as, and they launch satellites, which they're doing now. They'll be the second largest uh, 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 privately held space company on the market, and then uh, and then uh, Navasite uh, Navsite Holdings is uh, going to acquire Spire Global. They're going to be called Spire Global, and Spire Global it, it, it handles all the data that the satellites transact. So they get a they get a, a you know a, a monthly yearly contract to handle data through all the satellites up there. Um, very important business, very, very secure, uh, highly uh, secure business. Um, it's a big deal. And uh, it's one of these things that you don't see, that we don't see, um, just walking down Main Street. You know, we go down Main Street and, uh, or we hop in our car and we drive, to, uh, we drive to Costco to go shopping or we go to, uh, you know, Target or whatever and we just do our thing. Um, what we don't see is that after we leave the store, all the data that we've generated in that store by buying something, using maybe our, our, our uh, Costco card and then using our uh, Visa card or, or, or debit card, those transactions are they're hidden up there. And then they're coming back down again to data centers for the Costco people and um, for Costco admin. And uh, this information has to be someone's paying for it someone's it's been, it's an amazing i just i just am blown away that we shop we shop in our favorite store we go to the checkout line and we go through there seamlessly we walk out the store put the stuff in our car head home with it and uh, there is data flying out in outer space about what we've been doing and uh, someone's being paid to to move the data to interpret the data to handle the data to store the data on and on and on it goes that's where data farms come in satellite systems come in transmission systems come in everybody gets a slice of this biz and costco is paying millions and millions of dollars a year i mean probably more than a million maybe tens of millions a year to handle and transact all this stuff so that they can be a better retailer because the minute we walk out the door with the minute we pass through the the checkout counter with our cart full of crap <laughs> Those gigantic bag of potato chips. The folks at Lay's Potato Chips are are uh, uh, somewhere. The folks at Lay's Potato Chips are getting uh, um, uh, reports on their computers from the Costco computers that Costco will need another five skids of potato chips uh, at this location in Portland or this location in Las Vegas or this location in Miami, wherever these stores are. The logistics of shipping and handling the merchandise to replace the merchandise we've been buying has to be done. And it's in the, the freezer department, in the produce department, in the dairy department, in the, 
you name it department uh, of Costco, and then multiply that by every Walmart, every Target, uh, every, every uh, uh, you name all the retailers, all of them. Um, information back and forth, back and forth, back. The logistics of doing this, how, how, how we take for granted the fact that when we show up at our favorite store, our favorite item is there every time. I mean, it's like a rarity that the Lay's potato chips aren't waiting for you when you're looking for them. I mean, it's rare. <laughs> There's a reason they're always there because they're on top of it. I, you cannot believe, and their heads will roll if they, if an Albertsons or a Safeway or 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 any of these other stores don't have certain brands of product in there, their heads will roll. Heads will roll. It's incredible. It's it's just amazing how we just yeah we just take it for granted. It's always there. Chips are always there. Yeah, Coke it's always there. Pepsi's always there. Uh, sugar, flour, it's always there. Like oh yeah, grocery store. Uh, how hard can it be? How hard can it be to run a grocery store with four hundred thousand different items in it? Come on, no problem. Uh, Gavin Trailer, Gavin, thanks for coming, a new member. Thank you for joining us here, and also Derek. Buddy, thank you for being here, uh, becoming a new member. Uh, Jake, uh, West L S V A C available one, on 1G from UK. Um, okay, I'm not sure what that actually means, but that that's a code. That's code. That is that is highfalutin code talk right there, and I don't mind it. Uh, thank you all for popping in here and seeing me, um, catching up with me for the last hour of the day. We're at 195.63 on GameStop now, down 465, and. Um, AMC down to 146 to 1247. And we're talking about different companies and different stocks and different businesses. And it's amazing to me how uh, uh, everyday stuff that we take for granted is actually represented in all of these public companies that we follow. It's rather amazing. Uh, Gore's Holdings down 41 cents to 1558. They're going to take over and merge. They're merging with Matterport, which is the 3D imaging software. You, if you have, uh, an apartment or a condo that you're thinking of renting out for a little while when you go on an extended vacation maybe uh, this summer uh, through, uh, through uh, oh gosh, now I'm just getting a brain fart here. Uh, you want to rent your, your condo out through the folks at Airbnb. There it is. I have to go down to the bottom of my list to find the Airbnb stock, so it, it, kicked, me, it kicked in my brain. You want to rent your house out or your condo or your, your apartment building on Airbnb? Or vice versa, you want to rent something on air through Airbnb, going to Rome for a month, or you want to be in Paris for a month, or you want to go to Cincinnati, Ohio for a couple of weeks, and you don't want to be in a hotel, you'd rather be in an Airbnb. Um, the chances are that in the next year, um, A, you won't be able to, to even list your unit without using Matterport. Or you won't even consider renting a uh, an apartment or a house or a condo without seeing it through Matterport. You're going to demand to see what it is you're going to rent for a month on Matterport, on 3D. Uh, you're going to want to see every room that this uh, place has, which will allow you the pleasure of... Uh, uh, of standing in the middle of the living room and doing a 360 and you can zoom in on the couch you can zoom in on the on the TV area you can, you can go to the kitchen and you can zoom in on the appliances available and you can decide whether or not you want to rent this place because now you are virtually flying through this house or this condo um, to decide for yourself what it is you're renting and what you're going to be getting and if it isn't the same when you get there oh will there be problems because you will send photos back to Airbnb going, I'm standing in the middle of the living room of this rental and check out the listing, uh, what they're showing off on the listing with the Matterport 3D and what I'm standing in the middle of here is a pigsty. I, 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 this isn't acceptable to me. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you that this is going to allow Airbnb to really tighten up their, their listing requirements and enforcement of what you offer, you deliver, and for the buyer, they will have rights uh, to to step up to Airbnb. And say, hey, look, uh, I'm paying a hundred bucks a night for this place, and it's a dump. Uh, you know, this didn't look like this on the uh, 3D imagery they gave us. 
Yep, this is going to change a lot of stuff. Good things, I, I do, I believe. If you own a hotel, you run a hotel, uh, you're part of a hotel corporation, every hotel that has amenities, are, they're going to use Matterport to promote their property because if you're a corporation and you want to have a uh, corporate get-together with the 200 of your employees, 50 of them, 20, 5,000, whatever it is, you're going to you're going to be able to see the property in question with Matterport technology on that hotel site whether you're going on expedia.com or you're using uh, travelocity or any of the booking sites think about every resort in the world think about this every resort in the world listed on travelocity and all these websites every one of these properties will have Matterport instead of just photos of the front of the hotel and in a couple of rooms and the and the and the dining area over here. No, no, you can put the three D camera in there, and let it do that. <laughs> and then I can look up and down as well. What's it? What what shapes the carpeting in in the lobby, for example? Little things like that. <clears throat> this is a whole new ball game. This is a whole new ball game. It allows the ranking companies that rank hotels from three stars, four stars, five stars to be more accurate, because this this Matterport thing, annual updates. You, you can't just you can't put the, the the Matterport 3D thing from 2021 and still use it in 2025. No, 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 no. no, every year we want you to bring that Matterport camera back every year and update your site. Otherwise, we, we can't grant you the four star or five star rating. This to me is a huge business. This thing, this course holding is going to be unbelievable. GHVI is merging with Matterport, and Matterport is changing everything on that. That whole visual thing. It's just gonna change it all. It's unbelievable what's coming. Cruise ships, watch out. Every every cruise ship will have this service done on it. And um, the showrooms and the spa areas, and uh, instead of these standard one-off photos that they use for every ship, no, 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 not good, not good anymore. No, no, we want Matterport in the entire thing. That's what travel agents will demand. Travel agents want this to represent to their clients. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna put you on the Hall in America, blah, blah, blah ship. Uh, here's a link for you. Here's a tour, a virtual 360 tour. Enjoy. And you get to, you control the mouse, what you want to see when you're inside the, the ship and in your, the main atrium area, or you're on the, uh, <clears throat> you're in the uh, theater or you're walking the main deck, uh, looking at your room, what the view is like from your balcony. Yeah. Up and down the ship you get from the balcony. Oh yeah. It's, it, it's a whole new game changer. Game changer, uh, big money, global, unbelievable. Um, VGAC, uh, of course, 23 and me. It's up a penny right now to 1047. Game changer, uh, at home testing for um, for medical conditions. Uh, you'll likely be able to uh, do saliva tests for all kinds of uh, ailments, uh, and it's just send it by uh, send it by UPS. All return, just drop it off in a box or have it picked up at your house. Uh, Back and forth. Oh, yeah. There's a whole. Oh, that's going to be something. Uh, it's going to be great. Starboard Value and Fortress are at 1004 and 996. These two guys are uh, right at flatline. And uh, you have a limited window to get in there before it's too late. Um, but, you know, you have to decide what, what you want to hold and what you want to hold it for. The Sykstra, which is uh, Starboard Value, is the, is the uh, computer uh, data farm company. And then... Uh, the FAII, of course, is the ATI Physical Therapy uh, Cash Cows. Just, just going to be, they're going to be boring old cash cow companies. <laughs> just making people a lot of money. Don't be surprised if they start paying dividends within two or three years. They'll start paying cash dividends, and they'll just, just spit you money for the rest of your life. <laughs> but it's up to you. Um, whatever you want to do. Anyway, GameStop right now, one ninety three. <laughs> It was just touching 192, 193.03 down 724. Volume is virtually dead quiet. Uh, we're not doing anything. Uh, there's nothing to get excited about here until uh, really tomorrow and Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow night we 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 get the financials after the close. We hear we get the conference call. I'm assuming the shares will trade in the aftermarket while they're talking. That should be fun to watch. Um, I will likely be on the air for that. <laughs> I don't know how I can not be on the air for that to watch the aftermarket and listen to this conference call at the same time uh, and make my two bits worth of commentary with you guys. Um, we'll see how that goes. And then, of course, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, the fallout from the, the whole GameStop thing 
<clears throat> if it's any good, if they're any good, it should be really something. So, yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> kind of excited. Can't wait, uh, but we got to go through today, unfortunately. We've got to wait it out. Uh, the Dow is up 160, up a half a point. S&P up 35 points, 0.9% gain, almost 1% on S&P today. That's new highs. These got to be these have got to be practically new high numbers here. Nasdaq up 200 points at one and a half percent. Very very good. I'm gonna check out the Dow right now. That I can do right here on my little old telephone. Uh, the Dow all time high 33 227. Uh, 33 227. So we're not there. We're 500 points away from an all time high. All time high on the Dow, but we're 160 points closer closer to it. So there you go. Very good. Um, there's the month right there. This is the month for the Dow. That is the all-time high right there, and here we are at the very end right here. So you can see uh, we're coming up here on this uh, this new this all-time high here, uh, coming along nicely. So okay, thank you, Dow. Take us to another another record high. Make my viewers even richer. Go ahead, I dare you. Um, Cav, thank you, buddy. Hypothetically, after a market crash, what municipalities are the first to recover? Uh, what type of bonds would you? hypothetically recommend um if you're talking about municipal bonds for as an example um they don't generally crash when there's a market crash per se uh, taxpayers are uh, are viewed by bond investors um how do i word this bond investors view government debt as pretty secure stuff uh they, they kind of give that the gold standard uh, because taxpayers are, um, uh, there are many of them, um, uh, citywide, citywide, countywide, statewide, and federally, there are many layers of government. <coughs> and um, um, in some cases, uh, bonds can be issued by a municipality where they're guaranteed by the state or they're guaranteed by a higher authority or insurance is provided against the, uh, the default. And of course, for investment funds like uh, pension funds, mutual funds, bond funds, uh, they can only hold a certain grade of bonds or higher anyway. So they can't buy stuff like uh, uh, cruise ship bonds right now. You can't buy a bond from a cruise ship if you're a serious bond fund because it's junk bonds. Uh, the the uh, cruise ship bonds are junk bonds. You're not you're forbidden. Uh, and if you do hold a bond in your portfolio that turns into a junk bond because of a bad rating bad market, then the fund will buy insurance against the bond. They'll literally buy insurance. They'll give up half the interest uh, for an, to an insurance company to guarantee the principle of the bond and the, the payment of dividends or payment of insurance. So instead of getting 3% interest or 5% interest, they used to get, they get two and a half, but they're protected against the principle for the last two or three years of the bond's life. At the end of it, they get their money back guaranteed no matter what. Uh, either from the insurance company or from the uh, issuer, and then they buy new bonds going forward, but not from the same issuer. They won't buy, they won't buy more um, cruise fund uh, bonds. Municipal, municipal bonds, in some cases, are, are, are issued tax-free. They're tax-free municipals. And for high income, uh, high net worth, high income players, that's a good idea to get into. You're gonna, if you can lock in a four or five percent yield without paying tax on it. But you might only be exempt for state tax. You might not be exempt for federal. It, it all depends. I've always been one that, to, to, that has thought, you know, why doesn't the federal government offer its own citizens tax-free federal government bonds? Uh, when when you, issue, uh, you issue the 10-year notes, uh, why don't you issue 10-year notes tax-free? You'd, you'd, you'd be able to get the money for half the money. <laughs> Think about it. If you're if you're buying a ten year note and it's giving you one point six percent, but you got to pay tax on it, then you can buy the same note from the same government. But this note you can buy tax free, and you only yield one point two on it. You'll take that deal because you're not paying tax on the one point two, whereas on the one point six you are. And depending on your tax bracket, it might be a better deal to take the one point two. Well, for the government, they're paying point four less right off the get go, just paying point four less. And you think about a a thirty year bond that issues interest for 30 years uh why doesn't the government take uh put out bonds that pay literally one third less interest right off the get-go with a willing buyer uh that makes it easier to budget the government's uh, future expenses you know so i mean they start issuing 30-year bonds now 
uh, it, it, tax free to to Americans, basically corporations or individuals, doesn't matter. Um, the government of the United States could borrow trillions of dollars over the next ten years that would replace trillions of dollars of thirty year notes that they used to pay higher rates on. They're going to pay dramatically lower rates on. And that means that future generations of taxpayers will have much lower interest charges to to pay that service the debt. The argument could be, well, you know, if we keep issuing the way they are, they're paying tax on this money. Yeah, but they've got all kinds of tax schemes to get out of it. They have uh, there's all kinds of ways to avoid taxes with with uh, you know capital losses and and other depreciation plan games. Why not just have this minimum tax thing? Why do, why, why do we forgetting about playing the tax game with the taxpayer and just offer the bonds interest free with a one third less rate? You'll you'll sell all you want to issue, and you've just reduced your cost of borrowing by a huge amount of money. And it, the compounding amount is massive, and the fact that it's a thirty year note that by the time you pay off that loan, the actual loan that was originally taken, forget the interest you paid. 30 years down the road, the inflation rate is such a point that that dollar you owe on the on what would this be now? We're, we're 2021, 2051, the government has to buy back every bond that they issued in 2021 with 2051 dollars. Well, a 2021 dollar in 2051 is worth 50 cents on the dollar, 40 cents, 65 cents. Inflation just eats it up. So one, they're laughing for 30 years with less interest payments. Two, they're completely laughing with the inflation-adjusted payout on this debt. It's free money. It's less than free. It's actually the the buyer of the bond is paying the government to give them money. That's really what it is. Because if inflation is three to five percent, and you're only getting one and a half percent on your bond or two percent tax-free on your bond, you're you're losing. You're you're losing. So the government wins by helping people lose, getting the money now, and building infrastructure and lowering the deficit why they are why aren't they doing that i don't know I, are they are they that stupid uh, they maybe they are maybe they're that stupid and they don't realize they could do it i don't know uh, i'm just i'm just a guy in a living room in canada telling governments how to raise money for less money i mean government canada should be doing it the united states government should be doing it germany should be doing it the uk should be you should all be doing it they're not i don't think they are uh ruben uh new member ruben welcome to the welcome to the ranting the ranting canadian uncle bruce uh thank you uh donna uh can't i uh, can sell limit orders can sell limit orders be bought on the pre or after market maybe placed i am a new investor and learning so much from you bruce thank you okay donna can you put a limit order in on a pre-market or on an aftermarket that's your question i got you i know what you're thinking i know what you're thinking you're thinking what if what if GameStop goes crazy in the aftermarket? Can I put an order in just in case it goes way up there and they'll take me up? Or what if it happens goes stupid crazy on the way down? Can I put a buy order in there? Like a, it's trading 191 right now. Could I put a buy order in at $125 in case it goes down there for like a nanosecond? Uh, generally, yes, you can. But you can only put in a pre-order, I think, for the day of the trade. So in the aftermarket today, your broker probably... Probably, so you have to check with your broker on this. Even if, even if they allow you to trade in the after-hour market or not, but they may allow you for today only to put in an order for a buy or a sell or a buy and or a sell um, on whatever securities you want to play in the aftermarket. They might let you do that for today only. For tomorrow morning, you might have to, <coughs> you might have to <coughs> uh, create a special order with a date. Again, the brokerage firm you're dealing with with your app that'll you'll have to work the app. Uh, to put in a buy order or buy limit, buy limit order or sell limit order on, on whatever stock you want. So theoretically, yes, it can be done. It all depends on the firm you are using. Okay. It's not an exchange rule. It's a firm, a, a brokerage company, um, internal, um, whatever we call it, rule. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh man, give them state exemptions. I, I agree. I, I think I think every state in the United States uh, should be issuing tax-free bonds uh, to its citizens in the state. Absolutely. Oh yeah, and and I think the states should be promoting this uh, through employers through employee savings plans, so that that you know people working every every day 
they're they're saving money uh, every month with their employers contribution and their contribution and the money goes into a tax-free state bonds or tax-free city or tax-free america just build up a nice little portfolio and 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 for 20 30 years you're working away 30 years you're working away. at the end of 20 30 40 years you've, you've earned interest compounded interest compounded interest compound tax-free 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 and there's a pot of money waiting for you and you didn't have to play the market and all that but maybe the market guys don't want you to do that <laughs> have you thought of that maybe they do want you to gamble with them because <clears throat> they can take advantage of you because they're better players than you are i don't know wwe bruce the ranter there's, 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 there's... <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Bruce the Ranter. Uh, anyway, if the stock, if the price jumps over your limit order, you won't get filled. If the price jumps over your limit order, you won't get filled. Uh, well, if you put in a buy order uh, for GameStop at $150, it's in there. It's a limit buy for 100 shares of $150. Stock goes down to 150, you're getting filled. If it trades at 149, you you get a fill. You're supposed to be filled. That's a board lot. I can see if it's not a board lot through these uh, these platforms, but I don't know if platforms let you trade on small amounts pre after. I don't know. There's there's a lot of technicals in there, but the the general question is what we're trying to figure out. I think we're trying to figure it out. We're desperately trying to figure it out. I don't know. Uh hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. What else is going on here? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, couple comments going in. a lot of people talking to each other i think it's fantastic we're at 192.85 on gamestop right now and um, here's something cam i have a 220 dollars call option that expires this friday thoughts on selling and converting to stock or buying further out option well you may want to wait until uh wednesday mm. I, I well I, I maybe not i mean look I, I having said that i was assuming the stock would go up okay <laughs> There's no guarantee the stock's going to go up on Wednesday. I mean, this thing on Tuesday might come off like a dead balloon. I mean, you know, what if the uh, <clears throat> what if the guy sitting, you know, in the conference call just just don't are not charismatic enough or are not are not willing to share enough or are not willing to um, uh, share the vision that that I want them to share to you, uh, shareholders? What if they come off as stiffs? Uh, you know, this is a conference call, so I don't think there's a camera on them. I don't think it's a Zoom call. I think it's a just a voice thing, which is too bad. But, you know, if the person speaking has any kind of talent to describe to the listener the vast opportunity that awaits this company's future, blah, 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 blah. Well, then, you know, we got we got some action here. We may have the, the post market, the, the aftermarket tomorrow night just light up uh which will light up the pre-market wednesday morning which will light up the market wednesday which makes your on your contract look really good then you decide what to do with your contract sell it or roll it over to a future date and you know that kind of thing. right now you can still do that of course there's nothing wrong with doing it now um you can roll over your contract for two weeks four weeks whatever you want but you might have to take a higher strike price uh, you might have to, uh, you may have like 10 of these contracts. You might end up with six of the 220s or the 240s a month from now. I don't know. They'll be more expensive because they've got more time, right? So, you Cam, you can go either way on this one. You can make a move now and just lock in the extra time and say, thank you very much. I'm here for another month or two um, at whatever strike price. And you know what? If it's a 280 strike price, I don't care because what I think this stock should do if I'm right is beyond 280 bucks a share way beyond um on the other hand uh tomorrow night and wednesday the shares go to 250 260 and peter out uh you're at 220 and you've got that price the the book value plus time until friday and that might be all you're going to get um if the meeting is if the conference call is good but not great the stock might just do something like that. It might only go to 250, 270, 280 a share and then get quiet again. And you're sitting out, you know, you're sitting out a month from now with 280s. They might only go up 5% or 15% value, while these might go up by 50, 60, 70% right now. So th this, this, you got, you've got decisions to make, my friend. Yes, you do. And uh, I don't, I can't tell you which way you should go, but 
now you have you have some parameters to think about here kevin uh hi uncle bruce when the uh, vgac deal is done can you explain what happens to the stock will the ticker symbol change from vgac to me yes it will it will automatically change you don't have to do anything you'll be notified by your brokerage firm you should be your stock's name will change from vgac to 23 and me one for one so you got five shares now you got five shares of the new one you got 100 shares now you'll have 100 shares of the new one it's all seamless and the price will be exactly the same as far as where it closed at the night before if the stock closed at 14 dollars the night before and then the next morning it's now 23 and me the last trade was 14 the first trade is boom when the market opens you'll find out how the street views 23 and me as a standalone new company traded on the exchange that used to be known as vgac and so yes that's what's going to happen kevin it's going to be great times that uh that 23 meet those those guys are going to be very busy updating you and the rest of the world what they're going to do now and so that's what you want to watch for ek naked shorts are real or conspiracy theory uh naked shorts well uh there are people who wear shorts there are people who wear bathing suits like this okay these are real not the, but these are not naked the but the guy wearing them in here that guy's naked okay so that let's cover that first okay i've got that figured out for <laughs> but naked shorts uh are real or a conspiracy well, what are you talking about naked shorts um you trying to fool with me there ek what, what are you what are you asking me here buddy uh naked shorts uh kyle uh perth mint is naked what is that Perth naked Perth mint is naked something silver customers unable to allocate their paper stock reminds me of the mortgage IPO all right um uh, physical silver Perth mint is naked physical silver customers unable to allocate their paper stocks reminds me of a mortgage IPO okay so the paper is good for silver but you can't get real silver with the paper that's what you're saying so the silver reflects the value of silver theoretically and the hope is that you can trade the paper for the silver because there's an underlying silver bar somewhere for each of these pieces of it is that what you're saying Kyle? uh because that sounds like the paper is more of a uh a depository receipt than anything else but that's probably what it is austin are low premiums worth it <clears throat> looking at selling covered calls on my t shares and there are premiums with spike prices strike prices i would be comfortable with under 10 cents which makes the premium like five or ten bucks they're not worth it not really worth it um no um I remember uh, uh I had a I I knew a guy in the business a fellow stockbroker that I used to work with in a big office of like 50 guys he was one of the guys we weren't close or anything but you know I knew him of him he knew of me um but this guy was uh trying to uh was trying to sell naked put contracts um on uh I think it was either a stock or on the exchange but it might have been the stock this is back in 1984 yeah, this is going back a ways and and he was writing naked puts naked calls sorry he's writing naked calls and it might have been on uh on something like um IBM or General Motors or or something like that and the thinking was that he would write naked puts on the Monday that would expire that Friday. And he would write just out of the money puts, uh, like a buck or two. Um, and he would get three eighths of a dollar. He'd get like 37 and a half cents a share. So he'd get $37 and 50 cents a contract. And he'd write like a hundred of them, 200 of them. So he'd bring in $387 or he'd bring in uh, uh, $3,870 us uh back in 85 so bringing in 3800 bucks um american in 1985 would have been about 4000 canadian maybe and 4000 canadian in 1985 uh to give you an idea how much money that is my wife and i uh, jen and i were renting an apartment for 373 a month in a, on the 25th floor of a brand new apartment building with a pool and, uh, and a sauna and on heated parking and you know so this was a year's worth of rent that this guy was getting for four days five days 
by selling just out of the money put contracts in a in a in a stock and it for two weeks he had it going on he had it he was he, he tried 100 and he, they died worthless then the next week he did it again they died worthless so he scored like eight grand us in two weeks this guy was happy happy as can be now he i don't know how much he stepped up to but he was getting more aggressive with this and then he made the fatal mistake uh unbeknownst to him the the, the, the fatality happened he, he wrote the contracts on whatever day it was and uh it just so happened that uh that at that point in time the dow jones woke up from its slumber and began the beginning of what would become a 10-year bull market <laughs> he didn't know he had no idea and so uh within a day and a half like within a day and a half he would he, he would come into the office and the contracts would have ex would have been trading at three-eighths of a dollar the night before and the next morning right off the get-go they were trading at a buck he was already down a zillion dollars uh because he's naked uh he doesn't have the stock and his thinking was well you know during the day the stock will top out and then back off a bit these contracts expire on friday and they're out of the money so but it didn't happen the stock kept going and the next morning you know they closed at a dollar that night the next morning they opened at two dollars and he kept thinking the same thing and then the next day they opened at four dollars and now he was he was upside down 150,000 bucks it was it was a huge amount of money I, I don't remember the number of options and the number of contracts but when what we did remember was the the loss that this guy was carrying and that he ended up locking in whether the market locked him at it on Friday night or whether he bought him back I don't remember but he was under $150,000 and this guy um uh, uh was hauled into the manager's office to have a chat about his pro trading because this was his personal account which he had permission to trade but the manager sat him down and said we got us a problem here uh i have a broker that works for me that owes my firm 150 freaking grand <laughs> and i'm not using that word <laughs> he owes my firm 150 trucking dollars um what are we gonna do um because i can't fire you i gotta I, I gotta you gotta pay us back but what he ended up doing was he so you ended up mortgaging his house on a second mortgage and i think he got his parents to second mortgage their house for 50 grand and he cobblestoned 150,000 bucks and paid his employer for the loss that the firm had to pay for on settlement day and he made good on his iou to the house now not the good news, but the reality was that this guy was making six, seven thousand a month in commissions payable to him. He was he was a good broker. He was it was a it was a producer. He wasn't like the top guy, but he was making decent money in 1985. But it would have taken him now almost two almost two years to get that money back. And now he had a capital loss. So from a tax point of view, the next hundred fifty grand he made <laughs> was more or less tax free but oh what a what a what a wake-up call that was the whole office just went whoa look out everyone in the house was happy because the markets had been going up nicely the dow the dow was running and every client's portfolio was worth way more money including this guy in his client's portfolio they were all making money he was making more commissions than he'd ever made for years because the market was better but unfortunately he was on the wrong side of the market personally so this right here i would avoid like the plague i would not be involved in any like this at all i just i just wouldn't bother why do charts look similar between amc they don't they don't i don't know what you're talking about I, you're dreaming there's no similarity the companies are not similar there's 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 really no 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 there might be slight variations but no get, get off that just get off of that story get, move on move on find find stocks that you like to invest in and go from there anyway um Antoinette uh Bruce would make a great kindergarten teacher <laughs> the kids would love him I think they'd kill me I think I, I think I'd be driven into the madhouse with these guys uh, I don't know um uh, I don't know about that I think the other problem for me would be at the end of the year when you got to say goodbye to him I think it would kill me it would, it would just it would tear me up I couldn't I wouldn't be able to handle it anyway um uh, naked shorts equals unborrowed shorts counter counter counterrighted shares or is that counterfeited shares uh naked shorts i know what you mean sam i was teasing with regards to the actual sh shorts but uh, yes borrowed shares over and over and over again there are borrowed shares out there 
Um, and someday there will be an issue um, regarding the non-delivery of stock to cert by certain brokers uh, for certain clients to certain clearing firms. And when that day comes, they will be <coughs> there will be a reckoning of untold billions of dollars. And what I don't know and what I can't tell you is that when that moment happens. But I will say that just like the movie, uh, The Big Short, uh, the 2008 housing crisis, uh, the day of reckoning will come where brokerage firms will be <clears throat> uh, either brokerage houses or brokerage accounts or some, somewhere along the line of the business, multi-billion dollars of exposure will be will pop up and there will be multi-billion dollars of, of uh, funds transferred from one party to another or from many parties to other parties. Uh, and you have to ask yourself, are you in on that or not? Uh, you want to be on the receiving end, I would think. And hopefully you you have the stock that is the one that will generate to you the kind of money you deserve. Cav, uh, if uh, if you search level three naked selling Fidelity, YouTube won't let me spell the term. Uh, top result from Fidelity shows level three naked buy sell stock, level four naked options, level five naked buy sell indices. Yeah, Cav, you can <clears throat> you can really do some serious research on this kind of stuff. You can get really deep into this, uh, and some do. I mean, you know, you go to the Reddit sites, the Wall Street bet sites. There are guys, there are guys and girls that are really digging deep into this kind of stuff. Um, and they're really coming up with the the long term the long term game plan that sooner or later there's going to be a reckoning for how much shorting is going on undeclared shorting shorting via not delivering shorting via naked writing of calls shorting by uh, borrowing uh, you know shorting and, and borrowing and then and then reshorting and buying back and reshorting there's just all kinds of uh, shell games going on but at the end of the day. Just on GameStop, there's only 70 million shares in existence. Uh, someday, uh, someone somehow will say, "Okay, 250 million of you can't can't have it. We got to get back to about 100 million shares traded in this thing. We need 150 million shares bought back. Let's call in stock, <laughs> and every broker that's short will start buying up uh, stock. Uh, and as the buy-ins come in, the stock just goes." <laughs> Because to attract paper, you're going to have to you're going to have to pay more. Uh, some people will sell out ten dollars higher than the current trade. Some will sell out at fifty dollars higher. Some will sell out at one hundred fifty dollars because nobody knows how far it goes. Because nobody knows how many have to be bought. Nobody knows how far to go with how many have to be bought. It just it's just one of those I don't know where it's going to go, but it's going. Um, and as it runs, it just keeps feeding on itself, and uh, uh, and they'll get to a point where this equilibrium will be met. But in the case of GameStop, I'm afraid to say. That if you're short GameStop and you get called in by your broker, and you better hope you're the first guy called in, uh, by the way. Uh, you hope that your pension fund or your, sorry, your hedge fund is the first fund to be told you got to cover your 100,000 share short position. Because you don't want to be the 15th guy to be getting that phone call after two days of this or three weeks of this buy-in, forced buy-in. You want to be the first guy so that you can buy the stock right now, 191.66 up to 210 maybe 220 and you get off you're, you're you bought your hundred thousand back and you're out lick your wounds you're gone you don't want to be the 15th guy that starts buying at 450 or starts buying at 674 dollars and 88 cents a share you don't want to be that guy but then again you might be the guy who's the 80th guy to get the call on the 15th day the 18th day i have no idea and you're the one paying 1100 a share to 1400 a share to get out of your position i don't know um what i also don't know is uh, if the shares begin to run violently higher and they move up to uh, 500 a share, 600 a share, and they just have no sign of letting go. I have a suspicion that there will be hedge funds that will not be waiting for their broker to tell them to buy back. <laughs> they're just going to start buying back on their own because they're already bleeding hundreds of millions of dollars in losses. And if this thing just shows no sign of letting up because of the absolute uh, upside down nature of this whole thing, this could be just insanity. And and that's why there are people out there saying, oh, it's going to $10,000 a share. That's how this is going to happen. This is going to happen because the, 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 the thing feeds itself. But right now, between $191 and $350, the street seems to be able to carry multi-billion dollars of losses or exposure. But I'm wondering, can they, can they comfortably, as comfortably carry it 
when it reaches a uh, thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a share once the stock gets to that level and we're into the tens of billions of dollars of possible losses and carrying charges uh it does the street stay just as comfortable or does it start to get a bit uh, frayed at the edges uh you know and it, it just goes on and on it, it, theoretically there's no limit to the upside of the stock that's what these folks are talking about out there about what kind of exposure really exists for investors uh who are short yeah that's why you want to be a long holder and be a diamond-handed patient holder that says you know i like the stock i like the company i like i like what these guys are going to do with the company i think i'll wait let's just see what happens uh, we'll, we'll ride this i'll follow uncle bruce he'll tell me what's going on and we'll see what's going on 192 is what's going on 192 down eight bucks it's in no man's land it's not down enough to be on the short restricted list it's not uh, low enough to get really worried about it it's not you know it, it's not uh, trading enough to worry about the volume it, it's just quiet it's just the day before the financial results is what we're we're sitting on right now this we're in this moment in time where we gotta patiently wait to see what happens cav uh as someone living in the usa should i be concerned with this headline from the wall street journal federal reserve to end emergency capital relief for big banks uh I would say, uh, Kev, that that might be a good news story because they don't need to offer emergency relief to the big banks anymore. The banks are so flush with cash. There's so much cash in the system that the Fed has made sure that there's a lot of cash in the system that they don't have to be on standby to bail them out. But believe me, my friend, believe me, if uh, the markets were to turn in any way, and the Fed had to step in to uh, grant uh, immediate loans at the cash window. If the Fed had to step in to flood the market with emergency relief cash, they've learned their lesson from 08. They, they have not forgotten that. And they know that the best thing they can do to stabilize an economy is flood the world with cash for a while and then ask questions later. And so that's always there, which actually is a good thing for investors to know that, well, you know there'll be a lot of cash flowing around it might be inflationary but you know what uh inflation is better than no economy at all and so okay and what kind of inflation are we talking about one to two to three percent inflation or three to five to six percent inflation well, what are we dealing we're not talking a hundred percent to four hundred percent inflation maybe in erdogan's turkey there'll be those issues or in venezuela yeah where you've got governments trying to handle banking policy rather than politicians trying to handle banking policy instead of bankers i got gotcha. you dictators instead of bankers in the case of turkey yeah well they'll pay the price uh the, the citizens will pay a dear price for the for that kind of policy and uh there might be uh, problems in the streets one day who knows but uh, on the on the rest of the planet the rest of the world central bankers know that as long as they're there to provide liquidity when it's needed that that nips problems in the bud quickly just nips them in the butt right there so that that would be okay we'll see what's going on um time will tell uh, vo volume is picking up a bit says uh, jennifer james jennifer james hi jennifer uh 9.1 million shares mm, what do we got now eight minutes to go eh, the end of the day not a big day here um the stock 192.55 coming into the last eight seven eight minutes of the session for GameStop here, AMC weakening a bit. It was weakening a bit. Uh, Twelve thirty nine. It got to, uh, you know, it kind of got back to that. What was that? A little like thirteen forty six. Now thirteen forty. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, it was two twelve twenty six. I mean, it's not going to have an update today. I'm sorry for AMC holders. AMC is going to have a terrible print today. It's going to look really uh, worse than a ten percent loss, unfortunately. Game, GameStop, uh, 192.21, down 4%. Uh, disaster? No, nah, no. Nah. It's a prelude. We're all waiting. Um, just kind of sitting here going, we know the numbers are coming tomorrow. Uh, that's what we're waiting for. <clears throat> so comes the, the conference call tomorrow. It's all about tomorrow. It's not about today. And so we're just, you know, running along here and waiting it out and uh, patiently uh, watching to see what's going to happen with the stock that's the deal isn't it i agree i agree uh that's the ticket uncle bruce says sake bomb uh yeah 192.50 on uh, not a lot of volume 9.12 million shares wow and uh, uh 
waiting for the Dow to close it with 5.57 left, 5 minutes, 57 seconds. And counting, the Dow is up 100 points, 0.3 of a percentage point. Was it the greatest day of all time? No. It was uh, lousy at the beginning, so it's a nice move up from the low of the day. That's okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we're not setting records here today for whatever reason. The Dow low of the day was 32.512. It's now 32.733. So a 220-point swing from low to high, we've seen a lot more than that. We've seen six, 800-point swings on turnarounds and everything else. So this market is very range bound we call this a range bound market today it really didn't do much the um, s p up 26 and a half points and nasdaq up 171 neither of the neither of the three are setting the world on fire at all uh, but they're not causing problems either so we'll take that we'll have to tolerate that for the day today i guess 192.40 on gamestop just not a lot to get excited about 1239 on amc um we'll see tomorrow how it works out with a with gamestop during the day as people anticipate the financials um i i am uh i'm not all that eager not eager it's not the right word i'm not all that worried about the financials tomorrow for gamestop it would be great if the financials came out that showed a very strong fourth quarter oh that would be that would be delightful just delightful because a lot of the stores opened up and the new product came in and you know that would be great if they had a an, an over higher than anticipated revenue stream that would be fantastic but i can tell you that the financials of the company are not going to make the stock go down to 20 bucks a share or go to a thousand bucks a share it's not the financials that are going to do it what's going to do it is the conference call tomorrow at five o'clock eastern that's what's going to do it and uh I uh, will have to see, just see what gifts on this conference call. I, I think I will be covering it. Um, I will be listening to it, and uh, we'll, I'll probably be on the air with you tomorrow um, as it goes on to just see how the aftermarket is reacting. Because I'm assuming the aftermarket will be allowed to trade. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be halted from trading on the aftermarket. We'll see. Um, but um, we'll, we'll kind of play it by ear tomorrow. <laughs> I am very very interested in this uh in this conference call this 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 is going to uh reveal a lot of stuff to us and i'm quite looking forward to that anyway there you go um has there been something like this in the in your earlier trading days uh gamestop story in your earlier trading day? um not really uh, i recall uh, i'll tell you one story um there was an oil company called dome petroleum that was uh, darling of Canada's oil patch back in the uh, early 80s, um, late 70s, 80s, like 79, 80, 81. It was the darling. And they were they were coming out with phenomenal results. They were drilling. Uh, they were really hitting a, a real win streak of, of oil fields and production. And so uh, everyone would be uh, uh, anxiously waiting to hear from Dome Petroleum on a well, like another well they were drilling with five partners, you know, a $10 million deep well somewhere in northern Alberta. And uh, for a while, that stock was just, everyone was holding their breath, waiting for the next press conference about what happened with this oil well. And uh, for a, about six months, they could do no wrong. They were hitting hitting oil after oil. It was just a hit after hit. The stock went from 8 to 12 to 20 to 25 to 35 to 40. I mean, it just kept going and going. Everybody seemed to be making money on it. And then, of course, there were the doubters that, oh, they'll they'll hit a dry hole eventually and uh, and uh, that kind of thing. But it was a well, that was a wild ride, but nothing like this. No. Uh, uncle in Spanish is Tio. Can I call you Tio? Love your content, Tio. To the moon, Tio. Thank you, Bertie. I uh, appreciate you being here. Ruben, hello. Can you explain what I'm seeing about hedge funds buying stock from dark pools uh, or ETFs? What, what does that mean and is it affecting our price? Ruben, I, I can't get into that deeply because I'm not sure if that's real or not. Um, there might be a lot more uh, speculation about being real or not. Something very difficult to, to, uh, to uh, prove or not prove. Sorry. Uh, I'm having trouble there. One, one, hundred, one, dollar, one minute, 15 seconds. <laughs> one dollar, 15 seconds. No, one minute, 15 seconds to go in the day. Uh, 192.75 on GameStop. Down 750 a share. AMC down 147 to 1246. 
Uh, so they're both off today, but a GameStop not so bad now, but still 192.30. Eh, I want to get excited about this. Um, 192.96, uh, 192.99, uh, maybe a little, little better at the end, but we're getting here to the last 40 odd seconds. The Dow is up 112 points, uh, S&P up 27, NASDAQ up 61. Not a lot going on here. 193.31 on GameStop, a little tiny bit better. Not much to get excited about here. Uh, coming into the last 30 seconds, the bells are about to ring on Wall Street. And I've got my GameStop on here. 194.48. Looks like it's a tad better. A uh, couple of dollars on the end here, maybe. Um, see if this can hold it. Uh, volume, 9.3 million. Really quiet. Uh, everyone's waiting for tomorrow's numbers. Uh, here we go. 194.48. At this moment, that seems to be the closing price. Down 579 a share. Uh uh, 19440 on the aftermarket 19352 in the aftermarket everything is adjusting here as it comes through the very end of the day but it is uh 9.3 million volume very quiet day today as to be expected with the fact that tomorrow is the day the financials come out so there you have it 19448 folks are typing it right here in the comment section that's what they're saying and uh we're going to see what uh what happens? Uh, yeah, uh, anti uh, PC Tuesday aftermarket should go crazy. The second and uh, the the first points of that conference are revealed. I, I agree. I, I think tomorrow's aftermarket could be rather entertaining, and uh, I will likely be on the air for uh, uh, for a bit of the aftermarket. Um, I will be. Um, uh, I usually am on from three to five in the afternoon. I'll likely be on from three to six. Or longer, if necessary, depending on what this stock is doing in the aftermarket, to, to, to and try to interpret what they're saying and try to interpret what's coming out of reports tomorrow night already, uh, and then all day, uh, all day Wednesday should be a should be a GameStop fest of information. Uh, Dan Ari, um, hey Bruce, what is the best outcome for tomorrow's earnings call for us? Uh, the best outcome will be that um, the earnings weren't uh weren't terrible one that they were okay or better than that that's all they have to be um i doubt they're going to be terrible like i don't think the company's going to come out and say oh we lost 20 billion dollars we, we had a disaster no no the first three quarters of the numbers are already out uh and we already have indications about how some of the holiday sales were going so we're just waiting now for final confirmation that the numbers were kind of what we thought they were going to be and that we're waiting now for the conference call that's what it's all about then Den denary you want to hear the conference call where management talks about the financials and then answers questions about the future of the company <laughs> that's that's what we want to hear uh we want to hear from uh mr cohen we want to hear from him and the, and the committee he's working on this so-called committee that has been formed to convert the company to an e-commerce platform company we want to hear all about that and uh, we want to find out what does they want to share with us how much information are they willing to share with us so far as of tomorrow evening that's what it's all about um that's where we start that's where the journey begins from here on out and uh, then what we want to see uh, after that is how the um how the brokerage community and the the uh, analysts and all of these stock pundits react i, I guess i'm one of those pundits too um, how they're going to react with the uh, the the announcement of the, the the conference call on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That that's what we're all waiting for. The next thing after that will be next Wednesday, a week from Wednesday, end of the month. That's where all the adjustments are made with uh, index funds and ETFs. They they adjust their portfolio holdings for the end of the quarter. GameStop could be adjusted dramatically, might not be adjusted that much. We'll watch for that too. But the question is, <clears throat> will a stock from now, from here, be higher than here? And if so, how much? And what kind of an effect will that have on the adjustments of portfolios at the end of the quarter the next Wednesday? So that will be kind of coming up as well. So a lot of, lot of uh, things happening. And then I'm wondering also... Uh, Will this announcement tomorrow, this conference call, will it reveal to us that there's a possibility that the company is thinking of entering into an agreement to offer a secondary 
allotment of shares from its treasury to raise cash and if so how much are we thinking about is that even going to be discussed mentioned hinted at in any way <clears throat> and, and 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 if so this company wants to raise money uh for what purpose is the money for uh, do they actually need a lot of money to convert the company from store a store operation to an e-commerce operation? I don't think so. Uh, so um, uh, if they were to raise several billion dollars, several billions of dollars, they could easily pay off their line of credit that they have. That, that's no big deal. But uh, <clears throat> now what? Uh, could this company become a buyer of other companies over the next 6, 8, 10, 12, 18 months, 2 years? Could GameStop become the acquirer of a lot of other entities out there that are game game creating companies? Could they pick up the digital gamers? Could they start picking off? I don't know. I mean, how much money are they raising? A billion? Five billion? Fifteen billion? I mean, there's a big short position out there that needs to be addressed. Could that be done at five hundred a share to a thousand a share? Is that even remotely anywhere near i don't know it won't be talked about tomorrow night that that will not be talked about tomorrow the the what will be talked about tomorrow night is the foundation of the company right now where it's at and where it's headed in the next six months to a year that's what they're going to talk about from where from where they sit they may not tell us a lot about what they're also cooking up in their brains right now there could be a whole bunch of stuff being formulated they're not going to talk about that because that's what apple does that's what amazon does that's what all these companies they don't show you their hand Right, here's what we're going to do. Go ahead and take advantage of us. They're not going to do that. But they will give us hints as to future direction. And so this is a big day. Tomorrow is a big, big day. Uh, and then Wednesday will be the first day the stock will trade after the big announcement, we hope, tomorrow night, or announcements or pronouncements or estimations or whatever you, however you want to say this. It could be rather, uh, rather hectic uh, tomorrow night. And, and Wednesday and Thursday for the stock. So it could be deliciously hectic, uh, we hope. So let's see. I'll be around to follow it. Brandon, uh, I saw a doc on uh, on Bucket Shops. Saw a doc, documentary on Bucket Shops back in the 1800s, early 1900s. Do you think it's possible that um, Robinhood or others are playing the market without owning shares? Um, I do Doubt it. Um, I have a feeling that their auditors would have resigned by now if in any way um, Robinhood were pulling off any kind of shenanigans that were untoward. Uh, they want to go public, and so they have to survive a full audit of the corporation by the regulators and the uh, br the brokerage firms and the, the, uh, the, the stock exchange that they're going to list on. So... Uh, Really, you can't be trying to go public with those kinds of shenanigans going on. At least I wouldn't think so. Do you think Cohen will announce himself as CEO? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I think, and I would recommend, if he asked me, Bruce, what do you think I should do? He'll, he'll, never, he'll never ask me. Um, but if he were to talk to me and say, Bruce, you're kind of a father figure. Uh, with all the experience you have, what do you think I should do? I would tell him, don't take the job yourself hire a guy to do it hire a guy or a woman whichever is the best candidate for your job that you know can take this company forward into the e-commerce area you want it to go so you're not going to hire a a, 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 a a ceo type that is used to working in leather goods you're not going to hire someone who's in the suitcase business you're not going to hire uh you know some some individual that is a specialist in uh you know, producing uh, stoves. You're going to be hiring a CEO that is aware of the uh, the online marketplace, how it works, um, is aware of the kind of investment and staff requirements needed to convert a brick and mortar or or to create this kind of company. Now, let's be fair. Uh, Ryan Cohn is that guy. He is that kind of guy. He knows how to create an online company. He created Chewy with partners. But he may go after a CEO that is more of an expert in the CEO role that also happens to know how this can be done. <clears throat> that might be his plan because he, he may end up becoming the president of the company, uh, the, the chief, uh, the chief uh, of the whole thing, CEO, 
Well, uh, again, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to clarify a little bit here. When I read this question, I was thinking CFO, because right now they need a chief financial officer, and I don't think you should take that job. CEO, maybe, but even that, I wouldn't. No, I would. I would actually stay right up there and just stay stay at the top in on the board level, and be on the committee that finds these people. Be on the committee that pays these people. Be on the board of director committee that that sets uh, you know sets the bar. Here's what we want you to reach. These are the objectives we want. In effect, be over top of these guys. Don't even be at this because this will be a demotion. I think he'd be better off being on the top. Being a director, he's over top of all management, and I think he should stay up there. That's just my thing. Uh, will you be tuning in on the call? Yes, I will, and I will probably be live uh, covering the call through my phone here, and I'll be talking to you on this channel uh, as I cover that call, I, I'm going to try to figure that one out. But yeah, that's likely what's going to happen. So if you want to, you want to cover, you want me to, you want to be involved in the call, you can be involved in the call with me handling the call from my end here, and I'll try to interpret what it's, what it, what's going on with it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, Wally's World, thank you so much for the heads up on pre-registering. Where did you get to go for that? Uh, you can just you can pre-register for the call. I'm not sure if anyone can get in on the call, but uh, uh, if you go to uh, I think if you go to GameStop.com uh, and you go to the uh, uh, you go to their investor relations department, you might be able to register in. But it, it, I was able to register in through uh, through being a YouTuber, and so that's how I was able to do it. I don't know. I know a guy says somebody. I know a guy. <laughs> exactly. Um, I doubt that he would. He'd rather be chairman or something. Th th that could be it. Yeah, I mean, he could be the number one honcho here. He's the biggest shareholder. He's the. the he, know, he does not need this day job. He's the biggest shareholder of the company, and so he can now direct people. It may well be that he becomes chairman of the board down the road. Um, I'm not sure. Right now, I think the the chairman of the board is saying to him, "We're putting you in charge of this whole division. Your your job. Your you choose to take this job. You're going to help this company become an e-commerce company." Here you go. You've got all the power you need. You can hire and fire, chase down the people you want <clears throat> without having to be stuck here for 12, 14 hours a day as CEO. You're a you're just you're just you're a free agent. You're like out there. You you're rep representing this company and you can place people into this company the way you want with the talent you want to get for what you want them to do. Uh, that is what uh, I think is the best for Mr. Cohen and the best for GameStop, I think. Absolutely the best. Um, do you think they'll announce any new hires tomorrow? That's possible. That is possible. Uh, they might say uh, that we're about to do that, or they might say uh, within the next two weeks we're going to announce a whole bunch of new hires. That could be announced tomorrow. They could give us the impression that in the next 30 to 60 days, a whole bunch of news is coming out about this company, which will really feed the excitement, which I would prefer. I really would. I'd prefer you just you just keep the hype machine going here. Get, get the market going, just buzzing about this thing, buzzing. This isn't a one-week stock. This isn't a one-week story anymore. This is permanence. This is permanently how it's going to be around here. There's a lot happening now and a lot more that's going to be happening going forward indefinitely. The stock does not go from here to 275 and back to 20 bucks a share and it's all over. That's not the story. The stock goes from here to a lot higher than here to a lot higher than that down the road because there's so much going to be happening and going on. This isn't a one week wonder story anymore. This is the new game stuff. Busy, busy, busy guys. Kind of looking forward to this. Uh, he was making a thousand a week when he was 12 making websites for businesses. <laughs> Uh, how do you how do you feel now? <laughs> how how does anyone feel inconsequential all of a sudden? Uh, Bruce, are you aware that you appear in a tongue in cheek movie poster of the GameStop GameStop saga created by someone on GameStop? Don't worry, it's it's way it's way good. Um, I don't know if I've seen this or not. I've I've seen some stuff out there. Uh, I'll show you something I saw, uh, which I I got a I personally got a kick out of. It. I thought it was funny. Um, I kind of enjoyed it. It was this. It was this picture here. Uh, <laughs> there, there, someone took my image, my face, and put it on top of a of a performer 
with a bagel in the background. So I'm a rocker here. You can see me there, here, baby. I'm rocking it out. I saw this. I howled. I howled. I thought it was so funny. Of course, I immediately sent to my daughter. Said, "See, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a trending. I'm going. I'm trending." Uh, and she, she's going, "Oh, dad. Oh, gosh, dad, dad, dad. I, I think this is so fun. Um, whatever's in good taste, I'm a happy guy. But I'll tell you, it, it doesn't hurt the channel's promotion, does it? I suppose. Yeah. I might have a phone call this week with, uh, with the uh, director. Uh, yeah, there's a possibility of a phone call with the director this week." talking about the GameStop story and the fact that uh, I apparently seem to be a, uh, a uh, possible uh, character in a documentary about the GameStop story from a social media side of the argument. Apparently, uh, people want to talk to me, so well, I don't know. We'll see what's going on. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been made an offer, though. No one's, no one's offering me uh, uh, so, you know, anything for my time and my efforts. They don't want me to talk for nothing. So I find that a little, you know. He's showing us his phone. I love it. He's showing us his phone. This is great stuff. Uh, I'm an old guy. Uh, you know, I, I, there's theoretically ways that I could upload this for you, but I have no idea how to do that. But here I can I can control this, and I can say, here, I'll show This is what I want you to see, and I can hold it in front of you. Like it? Don't like it? Sorry. Uh, there you go. All publicity is good publicity. Go get him, Uncle Bruce. There you go. Uh, I came for the stock advice. I stayed for the Canadian wholesomeness. There you go. Uh, starring Bruce as himself. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good for you, Bruce. Uh, 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 only if Jennifer Aniston is your opposite. I agree. Um, <laughs> embrace the memes. Docu Bruce hype. Bruce, you need an agent. I know I do. I I I have. I'm putting a call out. Does anyone out there know an agent that can represent me to Hollywood? To to uh, production companies, to uh, uh, I need I need an agent. I I really do. I need someone to handle this. Stuff. I don't know how to talk to these people. I I don't want to be uh, giving away the farm for free. Uh, that's not right. I mean, gosh, and I don't want to be uh, in any way portrayed as a goofball so that my channel counts go down. I don't want to hurt my channel. I want my channel counts to go up. So, you know, you got to be careful out there. Uh, what can I say? Uh, Docu Bruce hype. <laughs> don't, forget, don't forget about us when you get rich and famous Uncle Brucey. I'll, I'll never forget the all the fans on that channel I created. What was the name of that channel again? Uh, uh, I remember that was a couple of years ago. And I, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> you are famous. Ah, oh, you should be sponsored by Snyder's Bagels. I, I should be approached by all kinds of bagel companies, don't you think? You would think I'd, I should be approached by all the grocery stores that sell bagels? Don't don't you? My agent should be handling that right now. I should have an agent that should handle all this. Michael Caine will play you in the movie. A younger Michael Caine. Come on, cut me a break. Uh, <laughs> Bruce, I'll be your agent for real with references. Oh, man. Bruce, you're too good looking. Their cameras would not do you with your Canadian sexiness. You might be right. I don't know. Uh, Roaring Kitty, talent agent. Uh, Bruce is going to have... Uh, Bruce is going to have a hard time fighting off the investors he created. Uh, Wally's world. Cohen is a leader for everyone, inclusively. Inclusivity, employees, customers, vendors. He is no different than you or me and will profit, profitably grow his business ethically and responsible, period. I'd love to talk to that guy off the record one day, just on the phone, just have a chat with a guy like that. Man, that would be fun to talk to someone like that, but he's kind of busy right now. Um, you know, don't forget about us. I'll, I'll sell you an e I'll send you an email with references. Hey, uh, you and anyone else, uh, anybody out there want to be my agent, uh, send me references and, uh, show me you're the real deal. I, I need someone that can handle social media agency representation. I'm getting scam emails. Like you cannot believe from scam everything trying to uh, get me to talk to these people. It is scary. It is terrifying. Uh, I need a real human being that can help us. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Christopher Walken could pay me, uh, play me someone to sing. Calva, I have a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. I'm telling you, I need more cowbell. You should be on CNBC better than some of the. No, no, no. I don't want a day job with any of these guys. I have a, I have a day job right here. I just need a day job that that 
enhances this channel's performance even more. I'm quite happy doing this. I'm working from my house. I don't have to leave my house. This is good. No, this is good. Uh, no, I don't want to move to New Jersey and be in the studio down there. No, 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 I don't think so. No. Uh, <laughs> James Spader should play Bruce. Uh, don't forget Jen. Uh, she gets a show, shows hand only, making all kinds of different bagels, bagels and curling chat with Jen every 30 minutes every day. And then Steeler chat, NFL Steeler chat. Oh, my God. Uh, there you go. Robert Mannix, they'd never let him on NBC. See, he'd explain their whole week's worth of programming in a single segment. We can't have that. Uh, <laughs> if the earnings come in really nice, I could they could announce a split maybe. Uh, that would make total sense. More cowbell, Anthony Hopkins. Uh, look, I brought kittens. Christopher Walken's story is the absolute best. I, I'd like a Bill Murray, Bruce. Yeah, Bill Murray could do That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be all right. More importantly than I need to be in your house, don't have you put your pants on. Exactly. I can just sit, sit naked like I am right now with just this T-shirt on, fooling all of you. I'd be the best way. <laughs> Sarah, Uncle Bruce, I can delete emails and tell people to go away. I'd be perfect for you. Um, <laughs> uh, Tom Henry, I say John Voight. If he, <laughs> if he go with Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah, Tom. Here we go. Tom Cruise. I mean, Tom Cruise. Uh, maybe Danny DeVito could play me because uh, apparently I'm four foot eight inches tall, Tom. I'm four foot eight. I need a Danny DeVito guy to play me. That would be. Now we're talking. Oh, man, Tom. Oh, more cowbell, Wally says. <laughs> How you doing, Tom? Nice to see you. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> whenever, whenever GameStop really goes up, Bruce, you need to ring a cowbell. I mean, more cowbell. Dana Carvey as Bruce would be a hoot. Now, let me tell you, uh, Dana Carvey impersonating George Herman Walker Bush. Now, let me just say, a thousand points a line, thousand dollars a share on GameStop. A uh, kinder, gentler GameStop. <laughs> Leonard Walsh uh, became a member. Leonard, thank you for joining the comedy routine over here at the, with Uncle Bruce. Tom Cruise is really short, you know. You could, you could, could, could Devito's too tall. It couldn't match your intensity. <laughs> I like John Lithgow. Oh, uh, Lithgow, but he's like six four. I mean, he's gigantic, right? But but he could play me. Uh, he'd be great. Uh, I'll throw everyone for a loop and have Arnold Schwarzenegger play <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> I'd say Kevin Spacey, but, you know, there's that thing. There's the thing. Oh, he has ridiculous range, John Lithgow. He does. Mr. Bean could play me. Oh, Rowan Atkinson as Mr. Bean could play. Oh, man. <laughs> Marty Feldman, if he wasn't dead. <laughs> but then again. He could be such a good actor. Even dead, he could play me better than me. I mean, think about that. Oh, I can't stop thinking of Walken doing Bruce's unbelievable. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, as a new bagel, newborn bagel member, I'd like to say that I'd really enjoy to see you talk about any stonks at all. Jim Carrey would be great. Oh, man. Uh, Bruce, Shia LaBeouf could play you or Dwayne Johnson. The Rock, uh, Mass Hogas, thank you for becoming a member, Mass. Oh, man, I don't know what kind of channel you're joining, but we're having fun here. Uh, that does throw a spanner in the works, though. Uh, Paul Giamani, there's a great actor. Wouldn't that be great? Robert is loving. Um, here's the thing. It's exactly what Kevin Spacey did. Here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Oh, no. We need Ryan Reynolds. Uh, no one can match a Canadian's term other than and Ryan is closest actor to Bruce's appearance. Ryan Reynolds. How about The Rock? Definitely Gary Oldham. Oldham. Oldman. Gary Oldman. There we go. Gary Oldman. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Too much fun, you guys. Uh, way too much fun. Hang on. I'm missing all these comments. Where am I going here? Uh, yeah, they got that. And then got that. Oh, my gosh. Can't keep up. Can't keep up. There we go. Okay, 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 okay. There we go. Adam, uh, uh, the role Tom Cruise played in Tropical Thunder was actually pretty close to you, too. Uh, Rick Moranis, hey, Hoser. Uh, Paul Giamatti is billions. Oh, yeah. John Malkovich, there we go. Yeah, dark side, Bruce. Eric Idle as Bruce, uh, singing with the, with the ukulele, you know. 
Always look on the bright side of life. Oh my God! Nee, nee. Uh, how about uh, how about um, oh from from uh, from uh, from the same group? Uh, the oh gosh, uh, the tall one, uh, <laughs> the minister of silly walks. You know who I'm talking about? He could play me. Oh my gosh, I can't remember his name right now. I'm so embarrassed. Oh man, uh, SVT. I so I'm so looking forward to talking to you on Sunday. Do we use FaceTime or something like that? We use this right here. I set this up. I'm over here. You're over there, and it's a private one-on-one -on, -one on my YouTube channel. It's just the two of us. That's what's happening this Sunday. Uh, we're going to talk about what happened this week. Oh man, we're going to have fun. Diamond handed. Uh, if Walken does Bruce eating a bagel, would somehow become suspenseful? Suspenseful when the speech pauses. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Brad Pitt, since you already are married to Jen, it's natural. Brad Pitt would play you. Jennifer would play Jen. And there you go. Look at the ratings that this show would get with those two in the lead roles right there. But they wouldn't see Jen because they'd only see her hands handing Brad Pitt the bagels. What a waste. You know, I mean, we'd have to have a camera showing me from an angle, different scenes, having Brad from having Brad from back here showing Jen coming up to him. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> uh, been a viewer for a while now. The memes are so hot today. I had to join. Oh, my God. Kevin Hart, Bubbles as Bruce. David Foley from Kids in the Hall. David Foley. Uh, Bruce Almighty. My vote is Steve Spiros, Spy Spiros as Bruce. Easy, easy. Go on. Uh, Leonard, uh, if they could make a great South Park character of you, oh, could they ever? Wally, Ryan Reynolds would be the best. You have similar personalities or senses of humor, both products of the great white North Bay. Oh, my gosh. Kevin O'Leary, knee, knee, knee. Uh, John Cleese, that's right. John Cleese, how about him playing me? Uh, now for something completely different. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that would be wild to have John Cleese play me. Uh, this is kind of fun. Uh, Bruce Bagel Almighty. Um, uh, <laughs> nee, nee, nee. Um, uh, Merck Curran, um, the timing of the earnings report for GameStop couldn't be better, in my opinion. GameStop is impacted by news catalysts more than most stocks, and I think all it needs is a lit match to ignite the rocket fuel. All right. Uh, bring out the earnings. Bring out the conference call. Stand back and watch the rocket go. Uh, wouldn't that be fun? Uh, Bill, John Cleese for Bruce. Diamond handed up. I want to see a Clint Eastwood West, Western version of Bruce portrayed on screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. John Cleese probably a bit too tall since you're only four foot eight. Exactly. He'd have to be on his knees. He'd have to get on his knees to play me now. Uh, that would be a bit tough. Billy Crystal. Oh, would that be great if Billy Crystal could play me as Billy Crystal and I. There were similarities at one time to a view. Uh, some people said to me, you know, you look a lot like Billy Crystal because for a while I grew a little, a really sick little beard that didn't do anything. But it had that little stubble that Billy Crystal had too. And people go, you, you kind of look like Billy Crystal. But then I, uh, I, I, got, I got thicker. <laughs> Chunkly, chunkly, awesome chunkly. Uh, bagel time with uh, bagel, Bruce Bagel Almighty in, in a character from Princess Bride. Ah, there now there's something. Alan Arkin, um, uh, uh, Brad Pitt, um, Mike Wal Mark Wahlberg playing as Bruce would be fun. Uh, it's so obvious. I can't believe no one has done it yet. A uh, South Park uh, Bruce buddy guy, uh, 24 7195 for PS or whatever that means. Oh man, uh, Wally's World. I can, I can. Oh man. Um, a bagel print, uh, Walken would be the best. I, I like, I almost want us all to get Walken as Bruce trending on Twitter, <laughs> but but Walken is getting on. Uh, he's getting he get, you know, a uh, 20 year ago Walken would have been pretty cool. Uh, but uh, well, who am I say? I'm 65. I mean, what am I supposed to? Do? There's also makeup, I keep forgetting that. Molly's world, I can I can't type and I'm laughing so much. Like, you're looking right at me, man. You're looking right at me, buddy. You're killing me. Um, uh, Stephen uh, laughing, damn it, Jim. Uh, it's a sad time when passing strangers yell knee at an old woman. <laughs> Wally, uh, I get a cowbell for when the market opens and closes. Uh, damn it, Jim, we're in the dark times indeed. Uh, Sockeye bump on the uh, DFV. Gene Wilder, one of my all time favorite actors. Gene Wilder, too bad he isn't around to play Uncle Bruce. That would have been great. The Gene Wilder, or uh, or even uh, or even uh, uh, oh, uh, what about uh, uh, what about uh, 
Oh, your name, you know, you, you get me on the spot here. I'm missing names like you can't believe. Um, uh, <laughs> geez. Uh, the guy who created producers. Um, oh, my God. I can't believe I'm not getting his name. But he's too old now, too. I love this man. Um, the 2,000-year-old man. Um, uh, Rob Reiner. Uh, not Reiner. Rob Reiner. No, not Rob Reiner. Um no, not Rob Reiner. And uh, and uh, uh, his partner, the 2,000-year-old man, the, oh, gosh. <sighs> oh, I hate it. I hate it when I'm losing it. Uh, do remember mom up T T-Y time for your time and care, Bruce and Jen. Thank you, time. Um, Debbie Manuel, now here we go. You guys, all of you guys, there are 2,600 of you. It's too bad there's only 2,600 of you here because you do not know. You do not have a clue uh, who just became a member. This is royalty. This is traveling with Bruce royalty. This is stock market with royalty. This is just royalty from Chico, California. Debbie Manuel is now a member of this channel, and all of you will now bow in reverence to Miss Debbie Emanuel, one of my faves of all time. Debbie, so nice to see you here. I hope you're having fun because we're having fun here all the time. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, <clears throat> you're probably watching me at work. Uh, because I'm on all day long, and it's kind of go it's goofy, uh, I'll tell you. Uh, but thank you for this and for everything you've always done. Uh, you're just just delightful. And uh, welcome. Jen, I will tell Jen you're here. Uh, she, she's, she's in the back watching curling right now. She's watching curling. I'll let her know that you joined today. She will be – she'll go, oh. Uh, that's what that's the reaction uh, i think you need to have john lithgow uh, or if that tough guy bruce willis see now bruce willis could play me huh? john lithgow uh prince prince harry M michael kane as bruce's family butler <laughs> cav uh, a sake bomb at least his greatness uh was still relevant even to his this day regardless of the absurdity of the context um rock 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 patrick stewart there's another one um we're getting a lot more women in here now that's really cool and that's good that's really great. Bill Coyne, entertainment before the war, relaxes the troops. Uh, Papa Gamer, John Cleese. Uh, Papa Gamer, John Cleese. Uh, Robin Williams. Oh, that would have been something. Robin Williams. Uh, Gary is not here anymore. It's too bad. Uh, Cetaphen, haven't, haven't been around all day. Any good news on GameStop? No, no. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Financials tomorrow. Conference call tomorrow. It, would start, it starts tomorrow after the market, actually. We'll be here. Uh, I'm, a bit, I'm a big fan of dominating. Tiffany Haddish for playing anyone at the moment. <laughs> Diamond. Okay, uh, how about a cartoon with voiceovers? Oh, there you go. Um, American Citizen, 1984 earnings report tomorrow after the closing. We get those earnings numbers tomorrow. Um, we have Mike uh, Mike J. Pete as a member as well. Mike, thank you for popping in here and joining up. This is great. Uh, Robert is loving it. Gary B., uh, Irish, bring him back. Jennifer James, Gene Hackman. Oh, man, Gene Hackman. Uh, Mel Brooks, thank you. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get Mel's name in my – couldn't get it in there to get it out. I can see him. I see him there. There he is. Uh, Mel Brooks would have been. That would have been a fun time. Uh, wow. A SpongeBob and and, and Bruce Show. Uh, I can see it. Um, Mel Brooks. Exactly. Mel Brooks playing Bruce. Uh, Mel's just a little on in age now. Uh, God bless Mel. Ninety something years old now. Unbelievable. Way to go, Mel. Uh, JJ uh, Methuselah. Robin Williams would be would have been something that would have that could have been real. Oh man, James Spader, Mel Brooks, Mel Brooks, Mel Brooks. Everybody knows who Mel Brooks is except me. I couldn't get the name out. James Spader can play Uncle Bruce. Mel Brooks, uh, come on, Bruce. I thought you had did trivia. D dog, uh, really can really go crazy with the cartoon. Imagine all the memes that could be created. Oh boy, Mel Carl Reiner. Uh, that would have been cool. I've been a marathon. Um, I've been marathoning the blacklist. Um, um, Mel Brooks. I'm cautiously optimistic because some folks bought a decent uh, amount of puts today. Short attack included. I don't know. I don't know, Mel, Mel, James Spader, Mel, getting that uh, head rush. Uh, I just laughed harder than I ever laughed in a long, <laughs> long time. That's because I'm coming up to the camera and I'm driving you crazy. I know what that's. That, I know what you're doing. Judge Reiner, Mel Brooks. Oh my God! Did someone say Wall, Wallace Shawn, Vinzi from Princess Bride? Did, did, did they say that? Um, Debbie Mel just could not stand missing out on all this fun. I had to get in on this. Oh, Debbie, I'm so glad you're here. Observe thyself. Hi, Debbie. Uh, bowing to Miss Debbie. Uh, that's right. Everyone bow to Debbie right now. Miss Debbie, we are bowing. We're not worthy. Hi, Debbie. Love you, Debbie. Saturday Night Live uh, uh, will be calling soon. You heard it first. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, we're not worthy. How about how about uh, uh, some of the characters on Saturday Night Live could play me? 
Uh, for sure, some of the guys who've been on Saturday Night Live over the years could definitely play me. Oh, there's some really good ones. Bows to Miss Debbie Manuel. Exactly right, everyone. Welcome, Miss Debbie Manuel. She is here. Royalty has joined this channel. This channel just went up six notches on the credibility index right there uh, with Debbie Manuel in the house. Are you kidding me? Ex respect to Debbie. Men with brooms. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, uh, <laughs> check out the, the what is that? The snippy bro. I don't know what that means. Hi, Debbie. Uh, Mistress Debbie. Um, true. Hello. Aloha. Aloha, Miss Debbie. Uh, Miss Debbie Manuel is in the house. Mel Brooks, we have a new member. Ben, welcome, Ben, to the show and the club here. We're having too much fun here with all the comedy. It's it's insane. Uh, Dwayne, I'm going Sam Elliott for the Big Lebowski. Just have him narrating about GameStop with his deep voice. Yeah, or or have uh, uh, we got him narrating, or we get uh, we get the narration from you know Shawshank Redemption. Red, we get him to we get him to narrate. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh man, Mel Brooks, thanks for all the warm greetings, everybody. Debbie Manuel, you were you, you earned them. You earned them. Papa Gamer, Mel Brooks, Bruce, who winds you up in the morning? How does this work? Mel Brooks, uh, Ben Spoker, 94. James, um, new member. Thank you, James, for becoming a new member. Also, Jeff Christman, thank you for becoming a new member. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you for joining in here. Jackie Gleason. Oh, he would have been something. He read, uh, Peter, uh, uh, what is that, Dinkler? I drink I drink caffeine-free diet coke and I know things. Oh, okay. Ben Stiller, oh, yeah. Uh, Mel Bruce, I mean Brooks, Mel Brooks, yeah, yes. Oh, God, while he's saying, uh, Denzel Washington to play me. There you go, now we're talking. Oh, man. <laughs> going for a, we're going for a whole new demographic of viewers uh, for this channel, a whole new, uh, we're going, we're going elsewhere. That's, oh, no, says my. Buena Vida. Buena Vida, Debbie from Eduardo. Uh, Gene Wilder. Oh, too bad Gene's gone. Diamond Head. So many good lines in Princess Bride. That's true. Um, Harry Shearer. Harry Shearer. I mean, come on. Spinal Tap. Harry Shearer. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Jimmy Cap. I uh, can't believe no one has said this in honor of his 90th birthday. William Shatner. I mean, William Shatner playing my um, playing me. Uh, that Now that could be so. Now here's more royalty. Oh, man. Another member of the royal family of uh, TWB, Traveling with Bruce, Tom Henry, new member, mind-blowing, mind, my mind is blowing today, Debbie Manuel, Tom Henry, TWB, now in this channel too, oh my God, this is unbelievable, more bows to Tom, bow to Tom, thank you Tom from Richmond, Virginia, awesome sauce man, James Blake, do you really think GameStop will have any good news that will affect the share price? I don't know. I don't know. I think they could. They really have a lot they can talk about. And the high, the media hype machine can take it from there. Just tell us how you're doing converting your company from a brick-and-mortar company to an e-commerce company. That's all you got to do. That, it's so simple. Just just tell us how it's going. How far down the road are you? How, how far down the road will you be by the end of the year? Uh, how long will it take until you've converted it until you're satisfied? What is it What is it going to look like? What's What's the vision of your company? e-commerce vision what just share with a please don't blow this tomorrow oh gosh i'm waiting uh Merc mercury is laughing i'll observe uh, debbie uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and apologize for our behavior ahead of time <laughs> i forgot the thumbs up until just now what's wrong with me today how many thumbs ups have i got uh we have a paltry 1500 thumbs ups on this show this this live show 1500 it's got to be the lowest number I've had for a live show now in weeks because there's something I'm doing wrong. If any of you can can give me a thumbs up, let's get to at least 2,000. We've got 74 thumbs downs. If we can get to 2,000 thumbs ups, we might be a 30 to 1 ratio between ups and downs. Right now, it's just 20 to 1. Uh, these thumbs downs just keep coming in. But, yeah, there's 1,600 just came in. If you can hit that thumbs up button, guys, nail that thing. S slam that button. It's free. Oh, my gosh, we're doing the best we can with what little we have. What can I say? Um, anyway, <laughs> where's the stock at, by the way? Is GameStop doing anything? It's 194.48, 194. Yeah, it's sitting at 194.26 in the aftermarket. Nothing going on. Not until tomorrow. Not until tomorrow. Okay, uh, James Corden. Uh, well, I'm not sure what James. I guess if Debbie can do a double, I can splurge do, says Tom. Oh, man. Uh, Tom is saying hi to Debbie. Debbie's going to say hi to Tom. Uh, damn it. Oh, my God. Getting you to quote Letter Kinney was the high of my day. Uh, Jackie Gleason to the moon, Alice. To the moon. Sam Elliott. What a great voice. Yes. Uncle Bruce, I've sent you that movie poster into your email. Oh, awesome, Ben. Thank you very much. 
Uh, let me take a look at that. Oh, here it comes right here. Uh, there it is right there. Uh, where am I? Uh, where am I there? Am I anywhere? I see. Oh, I see Trey. Oh, there I am. I got my glasses being adjusted. I'm on a GameStop. Can't, can't stop. Won't stop. Um, <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I wish I could figure out a way to uh, upload this and then uh, put it in here. I'm not sure. Let me see if I can do anything. Let me try this. And then let me try this in uh, here. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Poster. I'll just call it poster. I don't know, guys. I don't know if I can do this. Uh, let's see here uh, in uh, downloads. We'll just try that. And then we'll see. This, this, this is me on the fly, folks. This is You are watching a guy who doesn't know what he's doing trying to upload a photo to you uh onto this platform uh because he doesn't know what he's doing um there it isn't there it isn't uh where would it be then would it be here anywhere would it be here anywhere oh we called the poster let's see if we, we, we could find it oh hang on you guys I, i'm bound and determined there it is okay let's see if get it up there get it in there get it in there all right let's see if it's coming up all right there it is there okay let me get to the comment got to get the comment out of there all right there you go GameStop, uh, the poster. Uh, do you do you see me? Uh, can you can you can you can you see me? I'm doing this. I'm doing I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Uh, I'm right I'm right here. I'm right there. Right right from there. Right there. Just right. Yeah. Right right. Mister below. Mister Cubing and uh, and uh, Ms. Or Cortez or, or or what's her name? That uh, you know, Casio Cortez. And uh, and near a uh, near Mo. Uh, what's his name? Uh, and then Cal, Cal, Mr. C, there I am. Uh, wow. Uh, well, is that awesome or what? Uh, is it any good? I mean, you got to be impressed that I was able to, uh, I was able to uh, put this up here uh, as quickly as I did. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, I did this on the floor. I don't know what I'm doing. Look at that. I got that up there. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Uh, the poster is up. Oh man, you, I know I know a bunch of you going there going, this guy, he's so lame. He's just he's just an old boomer who doesn't even know how to upload a photo on a thing. It's just too much for this guy. I, I need an agent. I need I need help. I need I need help. <laughs> Thank you for that movie poster upload. I appreciate it. We got it and we're happy. Uh, this is fantastic. All right. Uh, just save it on your phone and show it. <laughs> I will be your agent. I just need you to spend send a hundred thousand wire to my Nigerian uncle who happens to be the prince. There we go. I, I like I said, I get I, I got all kinds of legitimate people coming here. Bruce the pilot. Hey, Uncle Bruce, checking in just off work. Damon Ferry, how you doing, buddy? Imagine being hired by Melvin or Citadel to come here and thumbs down this guy. Oh man. History in the making right here. Bruce, I advocate for you on Reddit. Millions of us need one person to guide us. Together we could be a force. I don't even know what that means. Uh, th this is my favorite. Uh, up the me up that meme game. Gotta feed it after the squeeze starts. Laugh not loud. This is gold. No doubt. Uncle Bruce, aka James Spader, aka Raymond Reddington, hi highest of tech. Bruce, advice for the beginner trader with minimal funds to spend, say one hundred a month. Would you rather buy one Apple value stock or seven GHVI? Buy seven GHVI as many times as you can. And hang on to your pants for a ride of your life. How about that? Bill Cohen, you're part of history. There you go. I'm part of history. Wally, Tom Henry, even though it was a wrong channel and Bruce realized his mistake, he was still cool as a cucumber. How about that? Observe thyself. Uh, oh, my God. Um, oh, hang on. Hang on. That miss, I just missed it. Oh, my God. That's an amazing poster. I would buy that tech support with Bruce. Uh, excellent poster. I want a giant version of this poster so I can have it next to my PC. Assign that uh, uh, NFT and sell to the Winky whatever yeah, a million bucks. Okay, Reddit, uh, we're very proud of you, Bruce. Uh, well, I'm very proud of you. Uh, JD, Tom Cruise is 47. I uh, don't know his name is Cal. Ch Chamath, yeah, Mr. C. I'm beside, sat, sat right beside Mr. C. Oscar Voss, thumbs ups for you. Awesome poster, Jane Doe says. Uh, Debbie, that is awesome, Bruce. Matthew, I uh, got your glasses in the post. Uh, in the poster to look even more intelligent. See, I'm, I'm even more intelligent looking. Uh, not bad with the production quality, ad hoc poster, whatever. Observe. Uh, Merc at me too. Uh, awesomeness. Uh, hard to sell on games. Hard sell on GameStop. Bill, Bruce, we need a link to the poster. We need a link to this thing. Alexander 
Obama, Pelosi doing in there. Uh, Aaron Kent, it's hip to be square. I was going to suggest a meme uh, day showcase. Uh, Mike, uh, price target for GameStop post earnings. No idea. Damn it, Jim. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Uh, <laughs> John Lithgow. Awesome a poster. Uh, three months ago, it went up 20%. Uh, Rupert, stock markets with Bruce. What, what call premium percentage of stock price do you recommend? I have no idea. Uh, 750 share post earnings. Um, uh, Jay Gunn, I think you forgot a zero. Um, uh, uh, Benz, we tolerate that. My granddad used to stand behind me while playing Call of Duty 2, saying, that wasn't like that uh, every time after I raised <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, I I still think Rick Moranis would be good. I agree. Um, I'm so glad I'm a member of this channel. A Adrian is now a member of this channel. Adrian, welcome aboard. Hope you like it. I hope you're going to like it with us. Gary Oldman's dead. Uh, that's no good. Uh, Wally, uh, Uncle Bruce, what are you going to do with not only one but two Wallies? Wally's world. Oh man, I don't know what to do with all these Wallies. Um, too many Wallies. Um, JD, update. Gary Oldman is still with us. Oh good, thank God. Uh, maybe you can play me. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Trying to keep up with you guys. Too much. How many? How many lives? Uh, how many up th thumbs up? Seventeen hundred. Only seventeen hundred thumbs ups for all this fun and merriment. Uh, we need more than that. Oh my gosh! Still got seventy-seven down. But you know we're doing what we can. Uh, thank you for these thumbs ups, you guys. Keep them coming. Hit that button and and drive some traffic to us. We deserve it, don't you think? I mean, come on, man. Working hard here, man. Oh, gosh. Thank you, everybody, for all this. Oh, my goodness. This poster, unbelievable. Uh, uh, Frederick B. Whippersnapper says, that's the ticket, Uncle Bruce. He's hyped today, guys. Right on. Right on. Um, uh, Leonard Walsh, breaking news. New, new Squeezies toy announced. Right on. Wally's World. Uh, Wink Loves Twins. Are, they were the two brothers that Zuckerberg took to the cleaners on Facebook. They invented it. Zuckerberg stole it. Aaron Kent uh, put Gary Oldman's vitals on a live ticker. Uh, Diamond actually, CIA stole it, gave it to Zuck. Uh, James, uh, when and why did you leave the game? Pun intended. Why, why and when did you leave the game? I don't even know what that means. What, what, the brokerage game? Uh, or is, is that a question for me? I have no idea what's going on. Uh, Tim Williams just became a member. Tim, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the group here. The crazy gang we have going here. We're having all kinds of fun today where we got new... We've got brand new uh, uh, emoji, a brand new emoji. The ni emoji has arrived today. You get to use the ni emoji all you want. Uh, you can't beat that. I mean, that makes this channel just stand out from the crowd. I'm telling you right now, who else has a ni emoji? Nobody. And uh, I want to rock emoji is here. Uh, we're having a good time with this. There, Benz has got it going on right there. The emoji is ni, and it's out. And it's available, and uh, yeah, we're having fun with that emoji. Yes, bonkering. Ni, 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 ni. <laughs> ni. Please skip this message. Ni, ni. <laughs> Ready for launch tomorrow. Ni. Welcome to Uncle Bruce's crazy uh, uh, stock market therapy group uh, the, the hour after the close. Ni, I need to get out of here. Thanks for seeing me. Morning, Wally's World. Take care, buddy. Neary, Larry, ni, ni. Oh my gosh, they're just coming. They're, they're, the knees are coming from everywhere. What can I say? Um, ni. <laughs> my name is Bruce, and I've just seen the inside of a Turkish prison. It's crazy around here. Oh man. Oh, too much fun. Anyway. <laughs> You know what the good news is? 13 minutes and this show's over. Uh, that's the good news right there. Uh, then you can say Nye! all you want all night long. Uh, or you can join me tonight on St on Traveling with Bruce, 7 o'clock Eastern. You can join that channel, become a sponsor member with Debbie and Tom and the others. And hang. it's a hangout show for an hour. We just talk about whatever. We'll be talking about this channel and how crazy it is. That's what we'll be talking about. And then at uh, 8 o'clock, it's uh, Traveling with Bruce live on on Traveling with Bruce, 8 o'clock Eastern. It's cruise, cruise news. I'll be talking about what's going on in the cruising world. Hanging out with my peeps for the last show. That'll be my fourth live show of the day. Two on this channel, two on that channel. It's a great time to join the channel. Uncle Bruce has hopped up on goofballs today. <laughs> Can I have a stock-related question before closing? Oh, go ahead. What do you want to know? Uh, water, I have whatever Bruce is having. I'll have that. Um, guy, <laughs> laugh a lot. 
Pitter patter. Um, TWB, head on over there. I'll take five. Let's get at let's get at her. Okay, I'm not leaving. I just figured you were getting tired. I'm flipping exhausted from laughing. I'm done in 11 minutes, so you can recover until the next show on TWB. Uh, Anti PC, stop that! Stop that! Uh, damn it, we're supposed we're well supposed to wear African swallow. Oh well, if he was an African swallow, uh, I guess he was. Um, uh, Lee, um, uh, how long can the shorts really carry on shorting versus Lee? I don't know. Um, the higher the stock would go, the worse it would get for the shorts from a dollar perspective. Um, uh, the stock has to go higher. The stock goes higher, the pain gets worse. The pain gets worse the more they got to buy back. The stock goes higher. I mean, that's what it is. Are you familiar with trailing limit stop orders? Yes, I am. Would like to hear about them. Okay. Tutorial video wasn't enough. I, I don't understand why you don't understand it. What's the matter? It's a simple thing. It's just a trailing stop loss or it's just an order to sell stock behind the market. And if the shares hit a certain level, it triggers your sell order and you're sold out. It's, it's just that simple. I don't know what's so hard about that not to understand. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there about it that other YouTubers have made that might be better than me. Uh, you might be able to follow it. Uh, you might check that out. Me, me. I'm sorry to be so flippant about it, but I mean, it's it's really not that complicated a thing. But it is designed to help limit losses on a market that's going higher and hopefully will lock in a gain for you. If you bought GameStop at 192 and it goes to 202 and you put a stop loss order at 199, a trailing stop loss order if it goes back to 199 you're sold out at that range and you've locked in a gain from 192 to 199 hopefully uh, if it goes to 206 208 you move your stop loss order up from 199 to 203 or 205 and follow the market and uh that's that's how you play it it's it's really kind of simple but i understand if you don't know how it works i wouldn't be surprised if we find out someday bruce has a 220 volt line running out of his back the guy never slows down i'm, I'm just a robot i'm not i'm not even a human being i'm all plugged in we need to bring Bruce's shrubbery and a, a, a gone chop down the tallest tree in the forest with a herring. Uh, the limit part, I, I don't get um, the limit part, uh, the stop loss limit. Well, uh, if you put in a stop loss order, your market turns into a, a market order upon sale. If it's a limit, a stop loss limit, you put in a limit as to how far you will allow the stock to go down once it's triggered on the sell side. So if it's a 199.20 limit um it, it'll you'll, you'll sell on to 199.20 and not below that that might be what you're confused at you can google this and, and look that up on google too normal trailing is okay i use it gotcha simon uh, uh bruce please mention my friend abby talbot he brought it 330 he thinks he's messed up Al andy hang in there man uh you're only like a day and a half away from profits or more Maybe the stock will go to a thousand in the next week. I don't know, but then again, you might be you might be doomed. Let's just follow the stock and see what happens. Let them do what they've got to do. Damn it, Jim probably wouldn't put a stop loss on on GME. I wouldn't do that right now. No, uh, he is not a robot. Uh, he is he's not a cat. Um, uh, Aaron, uh, two twenty twenty one, whatever it takes. Uh, 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 remind me not to wear a suit when I ask Bruce a question. <laughs> Uh, DF, he is a cat. He came out as a cat. Um, Alba Reeves, hey, Bruce, you need to swivel your stock markets with Bruce Mug slightly to the right. In your morning shows, stonk, stonk looks like a little different word, and it's not rock. Uh, uh, I don't have to. Do I have a cup sitting here at all? No, I just have this one here, and then this one here, and then this one here, and this one here. Uh, that's what we got. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and it's not rock. Okay. Diamond Head, uh, Investopedia, a decent site for info. Um, <coughs> you might be doomed, LOL Lab. Bruce always telling us straight. We might all be doomed. Who do I don't we know? Vance, yeah, with normal, I don't have a, 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 a stop price. It starts where the stock curly is. At limit, I both need a limit and a stop price. Yes, you need, you need both. Um, Bill, <coughs> Christopher Lloyd as Professor Toby Bruce in the movie. Christopher Lloyd could play me. Oh, wow. He could, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, uh, what's that? Great stop. Yes, that, that would be fantastic. Aaron, uh, awesome uh, Mr. Mom reference. Um, I, I, it was uh, the blue one. It was the blue one. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, cheers, everybody, for from Stummers. Thanks for ordering these. I, I, a ton of these have been ordered through my through my store. It's unbelievable. We thank you. Uh, Redbubble, thanks you. <clears throat> Jen, thanks you. Uh, we're down to seven minutes, and I got to go. The glare on the mug kind of looks like sick, st sick markets with Bruce. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> right here. Yeah, I guess you're right. Right now with the uh, with the uh, with the lighting of this stock market with Bruce Muck, uh, it's getting reflected on because it's awful sunny out there, and uh, I got my curtains drawn. And this is not a professional studio. Um, don't try this at home, kids. Uh, Wally, I've got my mug coming. I'm getting a big one. Thanks, Fromers. Um, uh, T. Lane, my mug arrives tomorrow. Right on. Uh, we've got John going. Super sticker. Thanks, buddy, so much. James, where do you think <coughs> Cineworld will go? They look they look undervalued right now after having uh, kicking during the COVID. I have no idea. Cine, Cineworld, uh, I, don't, I don't follow him. Um, Mike, uh, this man is a machine. Uh, Connor, we like the mugs. Um, uh, that's the one. Um, Professor, if you were a place to put, uh, if you were to place an option on AMC, what would it be? If I was over to place a put option, on AMC, I, 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 I don't play AMC, so I don't like. I know where it is, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk AMC down on this show because <laughs> I have enough fun with AMC fans as it is. Um, um, you're on your own with AMC. I'm long on Bruce's mug, says Bizzle. Uh, Aaron, a new channel name, uh, Sick Marcus with Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> the Comedy Channel with Bruce, uh, the afternoon hangout show, comedy show, one hour after the markets with Bruce. We're down to 1,800 people. We have scared off 4,000 viewers by hanging around and goofing off. Uh, there's 1,800 diehards left. Uh, Wally, wow, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> AMC, aren't they, aren't they the car brand? They used to be. Uh, yes, the AMC at one time. What can I say? Uh, four minutes to go, and I got to shut this down. I got to get ready for two more live shows on TWB. Uh, I've got TWB folks waiting over there. Seven o'clock Eastern, eight o'clock Eastern. We're going to take care of those folks. I'll be back on here tomorrow morning, an hour before the opening, of course. <clears throat> See what's going on with the markets, <clears throat> and then tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock, we get back on the air and uh, stick around for uh, for sure two hours. But we'll be on longer than that tomorrow with that conference call happening. And uh, we'll see what the aftermarket does on the stock and how the market reacts to the financials. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. The, ba the Bagel Brigade stayed and lived long. Um, ever after markets, crazy times with Bruce. Uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you, Uncle Bruce. Have a ba bagel day. The Gremlin. Yeah, the Gremlin. These are hardcore Bruce members. It's true. Connor, I got my mug on Friday. It's the new. It's the new. My new ritual every morning should make one. A travel mug. There you go. You can get one of those too. See everyone tomorrow. Thank you guys. Um, Bye-bye, everybody. Uh, good night, everyone. Excited about tomorrow. Uh, Die Hard Crew. Absolutely. Uh, AMC is opening up theaters. It'll go It'll go up, up, I would call it. There you go. Edu Eduardo, <clears throat> have a nice afternoon, Bruce. Uh, a ni ni from Saki Bump. Thank you. Wally's World Bagel Brigade. That is cool. Uh, Vince, uh, Bruce would need to approve this. Uh, Damon. Damien Perry, 4,000 people had to work today. <laughs> we'll see you. I have a good feeling about tomorrow. I hope you're right. Uh, good night, everybody. Um, Bruce, you'll be supporting AMC indirectly with that film premieres in the AMC theaters. There you go. I guess that's right. We'll see you at TWB. There we go, Wally. Uh, enjoy the day. Uh, observe tomorrow we ride. Tomorrow we ride. Uh, yeah, sweet bagel. Dreams, y'all. Um, uh, Bill, uh, see you tomorrow, Uncle Bruce. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Vance Wally's word knee. Uh, Mallow, <clears throat> thank you very much for hanging out with us today, Uncle Brucey. Goodbye, friends. Diamond handed tomorrow is another day. Anna, I uh, hope you and Jen have a good rest of your day. We will. I will do two more live shows tonight. Then I'll finally get some rest and get ready for tomorrow. Long day tomorrow. Oh, man. Wally, thanks, Bruce. I'm long on Bruce GameStop. See you on the moon there, buddy. You got it. Uh, Lee Nicklin, uh, later, guys. Cheers. Bruce uh, from Lee and Nicklin, thank you guys so much for joining up. We got today, thumbs ups, 1,900 we got. Almost 2,000 thumbs ups. So close. Hopefully we can score some more here and get to this 2,000 thumbs up number. Just get us there. That would be cool beans, super cool beans. If we can get the just, just less than 100 away. Just a few more. Hit that thumbs up button, guys. Get me to 2,000 thumbs ups. That would be awesome. Awesome. Make it happen. We're on the last few seconds of this show trying to get to 2,000 thumbs ups. We've got a minute to go. Can we get to 2,000 thumbs ups in the last minute of this show? 
Guys, hit the thumbs up button right now. Nail that thing. Do me a favor. Find it. Hit it. Work it. Make it go. Let's turn it over. We're into the last minute of the show. Try to make it happen. Oh, my gosh. Uh, 40 seconds to go. We need 2,000 thumbs up. We need the last 100. Come on, guys. Hit that thumbs up button right there, right now. Get us over the hump. That would be something. There it is. We got it. Pizza bucket. We got it. Thank you guys so much. With 20 seconds left, uh, you pulled it off for me. I thank you very much. You guys are beautiful. Love it. Going to sleep uh, nighty night, y'all. Uh, fantastic. See you tonight, Uncle Bruce. Bruce, uh, don't I don't lose your voice over at TWB. Don't be doing that. Um, you worked so hard, dude. Uh, let's get to 2000. We did it. Um, goodbye, all. Thanks, Tommy. So I'll talk to you later. Eduardo, Eduardo, hope you let uh, you get Jen a good rest. You're very active. Uh, Antoinette, please hit the thumbs up. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, goodbye, y'all. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. I think we can do it. We can. We did. We did. Thumbs ups, bagels, diamond hands, smack it. Uh, we nailed it. Uh, please hit the thumbs ups. It's free. We got 2,000 thumbs ups. There, 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 there. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. It's there. Thank you. Thank you. See you all later. I just did it. Nee, nee, nee. I'm out of here. See you guys. <laughs>